Alright, hello, and welcome to a little bit of Evington. Uh, as you can see, I kind of sort of redid my character a little bit completely, and I actually encountered one of the glitches with the character creator, which is quite annoying, but basically what happens here is that he had a HUD, and he looked really fucking badass, and then the HUD disappeared. And I created a petition, and they were like, lol, no issue, you're dumb, ha <laughs> ha. And the reason this LP was, um long time in the making is because Fraps is a little dyke and refused to work uh, with this game until I chopped its nuts into tiny little pieces so what's good and yeah now I just have to leave my ship uh, wait for 10 seconds uh, the Fraps counter up here is actually blocking my uh, <laughs> It's blocking my session change timer. Uh, so that always works. Anyways, uh, for those of you who are wondering, this is an Amar station. Uh, you can see right here, it is in the system of Perryman. Uh, Sovereignty the Amar Empire. You can actually click this, and it will bring up a pop-up. Uh, that talks about the system, constellation, the region, the world. And you can actually see changes in sovereignty like for example you can see that triple a citizens has been doing quite well and then against all authorities yeah it's actually kinda cool how you can do that Ooh, wait did i just see wow that is interesting test has been in a back and forth in fountain uh... that's their little home bit of turf anyways this is my pvp harb from last night if any of, her, of you are curious about the fitting We'll just wait for it to load. Um, yeah, I didn't feel like removing these regs. And I had them in there from when I was using this as my mission boat. Uh, so, those are there. Those would ideally be uh, some sort of armor mods. Because I have a cap injector for stability. Uh, micro warp drive, disruptor, web. You know, standard stuff. Actually, it's a scram, not a disruptor. Because, basically, if you're beyond 10 kilometers, there's no way you will hit with multi-frequency and this is um, Tech 2 uh, medium guns loaded with faction multi-frequency ammo for optimal damage uh, the range on them as I said is 10 kilometers if you are farther than 10 kilometers you won't hit shit so that's perfect because this works in a range under 10 kilometers this lets you go really fucking fast and close the distance and this works in an like eight and a half kilometer range uh, I can actually check that real quick. Yeah, it's a little over eight and a half kilometers because of my skills, but it's basically eight kilometers, eight and a half. So uh, it's just a very close range brawler ship. Two damage mods, two armor mods, uh, sixteen hundred plate and damage control two. And if I wanted, I could actually put a newt or an energy vampire in here. It has a pretty good amount of EHP. Uh, that's without the damage control running. So that actually goes up quite a bit. Uh, just when you run that damage control, it's it's about 50,000 effective hit points, and it puts out about 600 DPS if you count the drones. Um, drones that I have in there right now, uh, just a set of hammerheads, which are Tech 2 mediums. Uh, they're Galente because, as I said, used to be a PvE mission boat. Uh, in PvP, people prefer to use the Minmatar drones because they do explosive damage, which is quite uh, weak in armor and just generally a pretty good damage type to be doing. And also, they are faster. They are the fastest drones, the Minmatars. So those are useful. Anyways, by the time I finish this rant, I should be able to leave the ship, which is nice. However... I'm not entirely suicidal. I think I will want to buy myself something like a shuttle. Let's see, an Amara shuttle, a Kaldari, Galente. Uh, uh, we're going to browse by station. 15, 9, 200,000. Ooh. Well. Looks like I'm buying one of these, yeah? Uh, Amar shuttle just costs too much. <laughs> uh, 
Anyways, let's assemble this ship and make it active. And let's change its name to Don't Shoot. Okay. So let's undock a little bit and uh, go to places that I want to go. Uh, specifically, I'm going to pick up my Drake and run a mission, and hopefully it will not be an annoying one. But we shall see. Uh, anyways, my corp is completely empty right now, uh, which is, uh, which is kind of usual. Uh, they're usually on in, I would say about seven hours is usually when they're on. And I get my four hours of sleep in between now and then. Uh, so it actually works out with my funky ass REM cycle. Anyways, here's my wallet. I have a small amount of money, but I spent a lot of it yesterday. So today we are going to be making money by running really cruddy level 3 missions in a ship that I spent a grand total of week developing the skills for. Yes, so, anyways. Mm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this easy on myself. Uh, I'll open this. Now, as you can see, Perimeter is my old missioning place. It's where I ran my level 2s for the Kaldari Navy. It has my uh, little missile bays. My assault missile bays. Yeah. I don't know what I'll do. I'll do something about those. And it has my shuttle and some of my old missiles. And here is my new hub. It has my drake and my hardeners. So let's set that as our destination. It's eight jumps away, which is quite convenient. And nine jumps from Jita. Uh, it's three jumps from Amar here, actually, to be honest with you. And this is my old, old missioning hub where I just started grinding the rep. And this is my Kestrel. It is my favorite frigate. Uh, I had it fit with T2 launchers. And it was the most absurd thing for clearing missions, I swear to God. It just went through them so fast. Um, New Kaldari Prime is where I rebased to a while ago. Here you can see my PVE lasers. And yeah, those were before I got Tech 2 guns. Actually, I couldn't afford Tech 2 guns at that point. I didn't have the money. So yeah, this is just a bunch of my crap. Uh, my old Tristan that I never piloted. Uh, my Arbitrator. Uh, some more drones. Uh, some small lasers. And I have my Beetle in here somewhere as well. I don't know where that fucker is. Probably in the bees. or Yeah, there he is. The Beetle. That's my industrial character. My industrial little hauler that I used to move all of this. Took about an hour to train that skill. And it let me move systems with one run, so that was quite nice. I don't know what this is. Oh, right, this is my old, old system. This is from when I was running my own corp. Uh, the corp that I ran was based there, and holy balls. Is that a war target? Are we at war with these people? Shit, yeah, we are. That Tango was motherfucking hunting me. I forgot. Uh, my corp started a war. And uh, apparently while I was last sleeping, uh, the declaration went into effect. <laughs> so I'm going to get the fuck out of here before I get owned by Tangus and my little shuttle and lose my implants. It won't really be that much money. It's like five mil worth of implants. I got them when I was poor, so... They're just a bunch of plus twos. Uh, nothing really special here. Uh, yeah, I got these when my character was just finished with the 21 day trial. So, uh, and I've had them since. All, all the betas. They're not really worth that much at all. And with loyalty points, I can get them. I can get better ones for three mil a piece. Because um, I've been doing Kaldari missions for a little while. Uh, anyways, here you can see my skills. I've, I used to have a lot of uh, shit and learning, but I generally moved that out. And you can pretty clearly tell that this is a combat pilot. I have a mill in spaceship command, .6 in missiles, um, .8 in mechanic, which is for my armor tank, um, 
engineering, which is your shield tank and some of your core skills. I have 1.2 electronics. I have basically half a mil uh, because these aren't really generally that useful of support skills. Of course, electronics, uh, engineering, and mechanic, as well as hull upgrades, are all up to five. Uh, those are just some basic ship fitting skills that you really should get up there. Uh, if any of you are interested in starting out this game, I can actually send you uh, some resources I created for Finders League, which was basically a corporation to train noobs and get them into the game, get them playing, get them into a ship and PvPing as fast as possible. Uh, so I actually created an optimized tech path to whatever in an intuitive graphical format that anyone can understand. Uh, this is from when I was messing around with PI. Uh, these I actually started with. I did not train a single one of these except for science and cybernetics that I needed for implants. Uh, social I trained my connections. That is an extremely useful skill. Uh, I actually didn't know about it up <laughs> because I never ran missions. <laughs> which sounds really stupid of me, and it is. Trust me, it's really stupid, but... Uh, connections is a phenomenal skill, uh, especially if you're looking into mission running. Um, social is just, just increases uh, the bonuses that you get to your standings at the end of missions. Uh, negotiations gives you more money which is useful, and connections is single-handedly the most useful skill for anyone running missions. As far as unlocking agents go, look at my standings, right? My actual standing is 2.81, gets boosted to a 3.67. My actual standing is a 0 .02, gets boosted to 1.22. Uh, basically, if you have that at 4, uh, you can start a faction and, within running a single mission, be able to run level 3s for them. Very, very powerful. Saves you lots of time if you have the ships. If you don't have the ships, and you're poor, and you're in a frigate, it still helps, but it doesn't help you as much, because you're not going to be doing level 2s in that little frigate of yours. You could, but it probably won't work out that well for you. Uh, yeah, I have a little bit of navigation. Navigation itself, 4 days, not really worth it. High-speed maneuvering, same deal, not really worth it. Uh, I have it up there, though, because it reduces micro-warp drive cap usage, which is ridiculous. Uh, micro-warp drives use a lot of cap, and that's the way it damn well should be. And then there's just some uh, miscellaneous skills that I picked up along the way uh, that I might train later once I'm done with my combat skills. Navigation, not really a priority. You just want to get some of the prequisites out, and uh, you actually need now four and uh, high-speed maneuvering to be able to equip uh, Tech 2 Micro Warp Drives. So that's why those skills are trained there. They were needed for combat. Other than that, just go back to them when you run out of shit to train, honestly. Uh, these are my missile skills. They're kind of pitiful. Uh, missile Operator. Uh, you should always get the skill that the category is named to to 5 uh, in a decent amount of time. Because it's usually required to get anything like Tech 2 missile launchers or something like that. Uh, anyways, I have my hams and my heavy missiles, both the four. I'm going to get one of them to five eventually and get myself some Tech 2 missile launchers. Uh, they're nicer. They really are. Uh, currently, though, not really a priority. Um, going down a different path. And then here you just have your damage boosting skills. Prediction, rapid launch, projection, bombardment, um, yeah, guided missile precision. Those are just your damage booster skills. Uh, those are what you level up after you level up your primaries. Those are very good, and they'll actually do a lot more for you than teching straight into tech 2. Uh, so make a mental note of that one. Uh, then here I have everything I need for rigs. Uh, I have a little bit of remote armor wrappers, a little bit in wrappers, but mostly you just end up running, uh, and then there's my rigging skills, those are kind of useful. But basically, mechanic is used for putting rigs on your ship, 
and it's used for remote repping and armor repping. And since I run a passive Drake for missions and a 1600 plated Harb for PvP, I don't need them. Didn't bother training them. Whatever. I can level down them. Industry, yet again, I started with all these. I did not put any points into this myself. Uh, they're just there. Also, gunnery. Uh, I have a shit ton of points here. Actually, I have more points in gunnery than anywhere else. I have weapon upgrades maxed. Uh, small energy turret maxed, medium energy turret maxed, gunnery maxed. Uh, I was working on larges at some point, and then I just decided to stick to smaller hulls and stay out of the battleship arena for the amount of, for the time being. Controlled bursts are very useful. 5% reduction in capacitor needs, unless you're flying Minmatar with auto cannons, in which case this skill is useless and you shouldn't train it. Um, weapon upgrades reduces the CPU usage of your weapons and advanced weapons upgrade reduces the power grid usage so those are fitting skills and if you notice 2x that's very easy to train now this is a 6x advanced weapons upgrades takes a long long time to train uh, so be very mindful of the fittings that you see online not only because they may suck but number two because they may require skills like advanced weapons fives or a power grid implant, or even worse, it could require both. That is the absolute worst case scenario. Uh, because in that case, you're just fucked. And I also did a really large mission yesterday. Um, it was going to give me something like... Whoops, this one. That's what I was looking for. Screw that. Uh, this one. It was going to give me basically a million just for completing the mission. Uh, but I never got around to turning it in before I left the system because I'm just a dumbass like that. Uh, so I just lost myself half a mil there. Uh, no biggie, I'll get around to it. This is no longer needed. Let me see, where was I? Oh, right. Uh, so basically, there are a lot of support skills for, uh, projectile weapons as well. <laughs> a lot of them, as I said. Uh... Small pulse laser spec to 4, you need that to get medium pulse laser spec. Medium pulse laser spec to 4, uh, it helps with damage, but it also lets you get tier 2 large uh, guns. And that's what I was working towards before I stopped that. Motion prediction, rapid firing, sharpshooter, surgical strike, trajectory analysis, as well as controlled bursts are all the auxiliary skills, and as you can see, I have them pretty much all to four, because they do help. Uh, in PvP especially, that little bit of DPS counts for a lot, and support skills are really what distinguish between players who are <laughs> ready and players who are not. I'm not saying that you need to have a lot of skills, uh, I'm just saying that it will help you, especially in a 1v1 situation. Uh, so I guess the moral of the story is, don't go 1 versus 1 against uh, several year old characters if you don't have your support skills. They're goddamn important. Uh, engineering. This is where your shield tank is, as well as your capacitor skills. Shield upgrades, tactical shield manipulation, shield management, uh, all of those, as well as shield operation, those four skills are needed to fit a shield tank. A passive one, the one that I'm running on my Drake. And as you can see, they're all pretty high, so that's doing quite well on its own. Uh, engineering is a fitting skill. It increases your ship's power grid. Very useful, uh, especially once you get into the higher fittings. And these are your capacitator skills. 5% uh, reduction in capac cap retime charge. Uh, this one is what? Uh, this is capacitator capacity. Uh, this one, 5% reduction in CPU needs of modules. That's a prerequisite. That's why I trained that one. And this one is for newts and vampires. Uh, electronics. This is where your targeting skills are. Uh, weapon disruption, I kind of trained that, but I didn't really use my weapon disrupting arbitrator that much. Propulsion jamming, uh, signature analysis, this one's actually useful. It reduces lock-on time. Uh, if you can't lock it, you can't shoot it. 
Rule number one of PvP. Uh, electronic upgrades. What's this all about? Oh, yeah, it's a uh, prerequisite skill. Right on. And then drones. Drones to five, scout drones to five, and Galente drone spec. Uh, drone interfacing boosts damage, and this boosts something else. Damage. What does this boost then? 20% bonus to drone damage. 5% bonus to damage of light and medium drones. Uh, so this one is a... This one gives you a 20% damage boost, but it's a 5x. And this one gives you a 5% damage boost, but it's 2x. Both are useful if you're heavy on the drones. And this one also gives you DPS. So there we are. These boost raw damage. This boosts DPS. So you can actually have some pretty nice damaging drones with the proper skills. And anchoring. Why do I have that? It's so I can drop secure containers. Uh, useful thing to be able to uh, do. So let's make this active and talk to my agent. Who is it? It's you. Complete. Close. I'll never see you again because you are very creepy looking. With this new portrait system, all the agents got extremely creepy looking. Like, is that a girl or a guy? It's a guy, but still. Dude looks like a lady. Seriously. Uh, then this. This is actually a woman, but still. Kinda weird looking. That one's not as bad, though. Uh, this is... This right here is the agent that I'm going to be working for, and seriously. Is that a dude or a lady? I... God awfully cannot tell. Let's see it. Show info. Uh. Alright, let's leave that in the notes. Uh, because right now I'm just going to be gender confused and stuff. And I can't tell. God damn it. Is that just a ponytail or short haircut? Transvestite. I'll leave it there. Alright, so, we accept our mission. Check our wallet. Make sure we got our money. We did. Make sure we got taxed on it. By our corporation. That we did. And this is the infamous flatbread in space. The Drake. Uh, this is the biggest flavor of the month ship in forever. Despite the fact that they nerfed missiles. Uh, it became ridiculously popular because of its ability to tank. This thing can tank like nothing else, like no other battle cruiser. And the thing is, especially in PvP, uh, the way missiles work is actually lag out the whole server. So in Zero Zero, you see giant gangs of drakes. And once they launch their volley, the other team just can't do anything because they get such bad lag. And it's just hilarious how that works out, so... That combined with the fact that you can fit um, an 80,000 EHP Drake, right? Remember, 50,000 EHP Harbor, Harbinger, right? Just like 600 DPS. Well, you can fit a Drake to be 80,000 um, tank and not lose any gank whatsoever. Because the thing about Drakes is if you look, they have a metric shit ton of mid slots where they can just fit the world's largest tank. Then they have their highs for damage. Uh, here I have shield rigs. And then down here, they can fit some ballistic controls and some shield uh, boosters. Uh, these basically take away your cap recharge and give you shield recharge. Uh, very useful in the passive tank. They are the staple of the passive tank. And as you can see, they're tech 2. Actually, everything here is tech 2. Uh, except for the afterburner. The afterburner is just there. And of course the launchers, because I just showed you my skills. I don't have the skills for those. And Tech 2 rigs cost too much money. So, anyways, uh, we were actually having a debate uh, with my court mates about this yesterday. As to why a Drake is going to be nerfed and why there's so many cries to nerf it. Uh, and that is just because the speed that it has... Combined with the tank that it has, combined with its ability to do damage, uh, it's just absurd. It has a very, very good balance. The fact of the matter is, in a one versus one situation, uh, if the other pilot, if the other pilot plays perfectly, he stands a chance of winning against a Drake. However, if the other pilot messes up, uh, well, then you're fucked. 
Well, the other pilot's fucked. You're not fucked. You're in a drake. You just won. Because you're flying the most annoying thing on the planet. Alright, let's switch these all over to Widowmakers. Get some nice EM damage going. And let's see, what should I be resisting against drones? One invulnerability field, one kinetic, and one explosive. I really should have an explosive, but I don't care. Uh, this is not, like, a seriously dangerous mission. I don't think. Shouldn't be. Judging by the reward, it's not. So, let's uh, warp over to the Ontario Stargate. Oh, bloody fuck. I like the right-click menus. They're nice. They're convenient. Some people use the overlay. They'll go down here. They'll look through until they get to it. They'll click. Or I can just go Stargates and Teary. Boop. Warp. It works a lot better when you're not at the edge of the screen. Let's just throw that one out there. And I don't know. Oh, right. New agent. Word. Oh, and I also wrote it. The long missile. I can't talk. I wrote. I wrote the wrong missiles. What the fuck am I, Scooby Doo? <laughs> I loaded the wrong missiles. There. All right. So now that's done with. Anyways, basically what happens is the Drake can do. All of its DPS at significant range compared to other things like pulses, blasters, auto cannons. They can't really do much. Well, really, they recently buffed auto cannons and they overdid it. Hurricanes are very popular right now for PvP uh, simply because of the auto cannon mechanics at this point in time. Oh, yeah, and that's how I run missions. I have my tank and damage notes down here. Uh, as you can see, I actually went through and crunched some of these uh, DPS tanks against some of the more common enemies. And then down here, I wrote down some of the less common ones and their damage percentages. So, that's that. As you can see, my worst tank uh, would probably be against the Bloods. Second worst tank against Sanchez, which sucks because it's invasion and whatnot, but... Really, I could fix that by changing up my rigs and fitting my hardeners a bit differently, and it's not a problem. Let's put it that way. If you want to go do the incursion with a drake, you can. Anyways, getting back to that argument. Uh, your ham drake can hit you at 20 kilometers with no problem. It's doing basically full damage to you. The The sig radius of a battle cruiser is such that hams do full damage. And even if you're moving, they still pretty much do full damage. Velocity doesn't really factor in that much at all anymore. Um, so, basically what happens is the drake can hit you way before you can hit the drake. Let's just lock on about six of these or so. Yeah, that seems about good. And let's just send a volley. See what happens if I kill him with one volley or not. Uh, so basically what happens is the Drake has a tank that's better than you. It can move basically just as fast as you can. A Drake can pretty much keep you at range. The Drake doesn't have optimal. It doesn't get any sort of penalty for missile flight time. Uh, well, not a significant one. So basically what happens is the Drake is pretty much doing its full DPS to you. From a range where your guns will miss 99% of the time. And the fact of the matter is, you have to be within optimal. Screw fall off. And fall off, you're not doing full DPS. You have to be inside of optimal with another battle cruiser to be doing that kind of damage. And as I said already, uh, by the way, it's control click uh, to lock onto targets like that, or control click in the overview. Very useful shortcut. Didn't know it for a while. So just throwing that one out there. Uh, meanwhile, all the other battle cruisers, they have to get in range. My harbinger has to be within. 10 kilometers and optimally within 7 kilometers of you to actually be doing any sort of decent damage. It cannot fit a tank as large as the one that Drake can without sacrificing damage because the fact of the matter is its armor tank takes up the same slot as its damage booster. Unlike at the Drake where your damage booster is in a completely separate slot type 
plus the amount of medium slots that you have is unprecedented. I mean, seriously. You have a ridiculous amount of mids. Alright, let's look at the fitting. Six mids, four lows. Right? They give you that gives you a total of ten. And those are pretty useful ten slots. Whoops. Uh wrong button. Meant to hit the one under it. Well, let's minimize this for a second. Launch another volley. Uh, I don't even have to really be paying attention to this mission. Anyways, let's pop open a harb. Let's just pick out a harp here. We have six lows and four mediums. Uh, it seems pretty balanced, right? I mean, all you did is swap, right? So now you have six lows and four mediums. Now let me ask you the following. With a harbinger, you're putting your tank into your low slots. And in those same slots, you have to fit your damage mods. God damn it, I pressed all the wrong buttons. I'm sorry. Uh... And, yeah, I I accidentally pressed the wrong row of keys, sorry. So, anyways, what I was saying here is with the Drake, you get six mids and four lows. As opposed to the Harbinger, we get six lows and four mids. That seems pretty goddamn balanced, right? I mean, God, Kamikat, why the fuck are you bitching and moaning? Clearly you just got butt hurt by too many Drakes and you're just a noob. Well, no, not really. Because let me put it to you this way. You need a damage control of 1600 plate at least two EANMs. Okay, that's four slots of tankage that you are taking up. Now you have two slots for damage mods. And then you have four medium slots. Can you put damage mods in your medium slots? No, you cannot. What you have to put in your medium slots is random E-War shit and shit to make you cap stable because you're crunching through cap like a boss. Even though... You, because you have to use a metric shit ton of cap to close the range with your micro warp drive. Then you have to use cap to operate your guns, and a good amount of it. Uh, hams don't use as much cap as uh, the turrets do. Not at all. Uh, especially considering the turrets are just constantly firing and firing. I mean, it's just pretty unbalanced in that way. Because on my Drake, I have five slots of tank. And then I just put my little runaway mechanism there, and that's that. Or I can have, you know, a solid four slots of tank, and then do whatever, you know? But, yet again, going back to the point that the Drake also has a nicer... a uh, nicer range to it, and its tank is much stronger, because if you show the info on this thing, and we look at our descriptions here, we get 5% to shield resistance, and 5% bonus to kinetic damage. Kinetic damage, whatever. No biggie. But shield resistance, that's a giant one. The amount of the amount of resists that you get on on one of these is absurd. It's something that you really can't get on any other ship. It's just not feasible. <laughs> Simply put. And you're not really sacrificing anything for it. The Drake is just excels in everything. It's not the best at everything, don't get me wrong. It's most certainly not that, but it is good at everything. So, that's where where does that leave the other battle cruisers? Well, you have the Harb. It's pretty decent. Lasers, lasers, pulse lasers and whatnot have always been pretty pretty nice for whatever, you know. Uh, the nicest thing about a harb is that you can start out with scorch ammo and then instantly switch yourself with no reloading time to multi-frequency. That is the only reason that is a viable PvP ship. It is because you can fire while you're closing the range and then reload instantly. The cane. It is fast. It can fit a pretty good tank. And more importantly, with the new auto cannons, the thing does damage. It does very respectable amounts of damage. So, hmm, these guys don't have bounties, do they? No, they don't. Frickin' A. Alright, well, after I kill this group, I'm moving on then.
And just oh, I can jump through that right now if I wanted to. Well, that's just stop my ship. Uh, anyways. The cane, right, that's where I was. Auto cannons. They can change their damage type. They can change their tracking modifier. So if they want, they can orbit you. It's fast. It can fit a, fit a pretty good shield buffer in its medium slots. And because of that, it can use its low slots for, you guessed it, damage. Uh, especially with the new and improved uh, mechanics for the auto cannons, uh, they do really fucking good damage. Really good damage. Cyclone, nobody gives a fuck. Hurricane costs basically twice as much, but that's because it's very in demand. EVE is very capitalist with its prices. It has 30 M3 drones, it's whatever. But this is the interesting part about it, is that it has eight highs, and it can fill all of them. It can have the turrets and the launchers. So it can still kind of sort of be scraping you while you're doing shit. Uh, and then it can use its four medium slots for whatever. There's plenty of uh, shield buffer uh, canes, and then there's some armor canes. But you see, the problem is uh, <laughs> when you put in an armor tank, you're slowing yourself down. And the ships that armor tank are the ships that need to close the distance. <laughs> so what ends up happening is <laughs> your own tank is preventing you from doing the only thing that you can do <laughs> to basically kill the enemy, uh, which is quite hilarious within itself. Uh, but as far as slot distribution goes, yeah, the cane is pretty similar to the Harbinger. Uh, but it is considered to be superior, as I said, because of the auto cannon mechanics, and generally just fitting wise. If you look, it has more CPU uh, because it has the launchers, and projectile weapons are just generally good. So that's why a cane is technically better than a harp. However, when you get into a duel, it'll really come down to who plays the cars right. Uh, because technically in my harb, I can just keep keep my scorch ammo and try and keep the distance, and who has the best support skills. And then you get to the drake, which is probably like the most expensive one of them all. Uh, surprisingly, the harb is actually more expensive than the cane, which is quite annoying. And then the brudix, I had... <laughs> the brudix is a funny ship. I have seen a 1,000-some-odd DPS... Uh, Brudix suicide fit that was just that just made me laugh so hard and just want to run it uh, because a Brudix is a very cheap ship as far as battle cruisers are concerned especially once you insure it uh, so <laughs> what ends up happening is it gives you the best pew for your money and then you just hope that nobody will focus you <laughs> while you're orbiting them at like five kilometers because honestly hybrids are garbage at this point in time Myrmidons? Okay, what can you do with the Myrmidon? You have six lows and five mediums and six high slots. They can put up a pretty good tank too, but they don't have the spank. They only have six turrets that they can mount. And those turrets will be hybrids, which are pretty rubbish unless you're up close. So a Drake and a Myrmidon, like, really is not even a comparison. <laughs> and especially when you consider that the Drake, basically, uh, ends up getting a battleship level of tankage. Which is just absurd, to be totally honest with you. There's nothing else you can say about that. So yeah, there's my little bitch and moan about the Drake, and that's why I won't use one in PvP. Because it's dishonorable and shit. But, uh, PvE, I'm down. Whatever. Um... Is it the fastest way to run missions? No, but it's the most versatile. I don't have to do squat. I can just sit there and let my tank do its job. I can sit back and fire missiles from 50 kilometers away, something that I would not be able to do very well with lasers, rails, or uh, artillery it is. Yeah, it's artillery. 
and that's just nice. It makes life very easy for me. I have some drones to take care of whatever frigates get in my way, and life is good. Drakes are just very easy mode in PvE. <laughs> Kaldari in general are just kind of easy for PvE. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you have a... Uh, if you have, like, an agent, like a level 4 agent or something, and you run missions exclusively for them, you can get to a point where you have a ship for just every mission they give, because you know their mission list. And... Why not? I mean, you, those ships will be able to run the missions more efficiently. Let's just turn that one on, and turn this one on, turn that one on. I don't have to worry about my cap at all, despite the fact that my cap recharge is lowered. Uh, I can run all of these modules at the same time. I can't run the afterburner, however, but who gives a damn? Well worth it, in my opinion. Especially once you consider the tank on this thing. Honestly, like, some of the hardest level 3 missions have just... No problem. And for level 4s, I plan to get myself, like, a nice raven or something. You know, just... Just sit around in a torp raven. Just wait for shit to die. Move to the next mission. I mean... Yeah... But basically, there's a court man of mine who has a <laughs> who has a mi who runs missions for exclusively one agent, and he actually has a ship uh, for each mission. Just because he's memorized them all, and he has enough money, so he's just like whatever. Uh, and these are like the kind of ships that he just saves up over time and all that stuff, because uh, he's been playing the game for a while. But if you're new, there's no better bang for your buck than Kaldari. For mission running. Um, so anyways, I'm back. I had to go play some tech support guy for my family. And, uh, yeah. I could just leave like this because, to be honest, I'm fairly confident that nothing would happen. This thing is way over tanked for any of these missions that I'm going to be doing. Uh, anyways, if you're curious, you can look at the clock down over here in the bottom left of your screen. If you can see it. Uh, to see how long I was gone playing tech support for my family for. So. <sighs> being young. Anyways, as you can see, I've just sort of sat there. My tank isn't even properly configured. I would have had to have an uh, an explosive hardener, but basically I've been sitting around the 80s percent. That's not bad at all. Uh, once you get into the 40s, that's where you know you're in trouble. Once you drop below 50 percent, basically you should be warping out of the mission and uh, going to station, and your shield will recharge magically. That is another benefit of the shield tank over an armor tank. Is if your shield tank breaks, you still got armor underneath to escape. And it doesn't cost you anything to repair. You just dock into a station, hop right out, and bam. Your shield's back to full. You're ready to tank again. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, anyways, before people start getting angry at me. Maybe some of you people that actually play EVE. I'm not saying that the Drake should be nerfed, though I have a feeling that's what will happen. Uh, because there's plenty of people crying nerf on the forums. Uh, but in fact, I say that the Drake's not necessarily overpowered, it's just uh, all the alternatives to it are underpowered. Uh, armor tanks are not as good as they should be, in my opinion. They have distinct disadvantages that they don't make up for in any which way. Uh, because, for example, let's say you get... All PvP pits, fits are passive. So there's no point running an active tank in PvP. You're just going to get alpha down uh, in any sort of fleet. So if you're running two passive tanks and you have this Drake, it's constantly regening shield points, just constantly regening. With that cane? No. The, the second you go down to that shield or that harb, you're... That thing's screwed. Now it now it has a limited amount of time left. It does not regen health points at all. Meanwhile, here I'm just sitting here, regening back all this damage that was done to me, no problem. Uh, so I'm not saying shields should be nerfed either. I'm just saying armor needs some sort of of a viability boost. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um. 
Same way they did, uh, same way they did to auto cannons. Okay, auto cannons were. I mean, people still loved Minotaur for PvP before the auto cannon patch. Don't get me wrong, but uh, <sighs> what happened is they buffed auto cannons, and uh, in my opinion, they went a little over with it. They buffed them a little too much. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion, not based on any sort of empirical fact. Uh, but basically, I mean, it's, it's they very rarely buff stuff. Whenever there's nerf cries, they usually nerf whatever ship is being cried about into oblivion. Like, uh, if I have a feeling that if they get around to nerf batting the drake, there will be nobody who flies a drake for anything at all. Uh, they're probably going to do something ridiculous like replace a 5% shield resistance with something worthless like uh, missile speed or something like that and just make the drake be horribly unviable in PvP. And the real problem with the drake is that it gets good damage for its tank, but they shouldn't be nerfing missiles either. They already did that. Uh... So, my solution would actually be just to buff the the armor tanks, make them move faster. They should be able to close that gap with the Drake. The Drake should not be able to exploit its range. And once they get in there, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the whole effective hit points game is a whole nother debate, and I don't want to get into it. Uh, with shields regening like they do, and... Armor not regening, obviously, uh, and as a damn well shouldn't. I mean, that's, that's the whole point between the two, but... Uh, shield is generally stronger. If you have the slots, you will generally be told to shield tank. I mean, that's where, that's where the game stands right now. If you have between four and five empty mid slots, you can basically shield tank. Uh, with four just fine you can form yourself a pretty strong tank uh, involve a couple lows in there literally two for the passive recharge or just fit a bunch of large extenders for the passive boost or whatever that's not really what matters here <laughs> uh, and that's not really what my point here is my point here is that armor doesn't doesn't have any advantages to shields. I mean, most of these ships start off with better, uh, with better shield, uh, better shields and stuff. Uh, the Kaldari do, I mean. Uh, the other ships, they obviously start off with more armor. Uh, but if you look at this, if you look at the passive resists, right, uh, they'll actually always add up to the same number. Actually, I'll go into the market so you're not looking at my ship stats. Look at let's look at the Myrmidon. All right, if you look the armor, right, you got 70, 80 plus that. That's 130 percent. Now, if you look at the shields here, what do you have? You have 50, 40, 90, 110. So there's a 20 percent difference total, and you'll see it when you go to anybody's ship. For example, here's this thing. Let's add up the armor. Uh, 25, 30, 60, 80, 130. Let's go down to the shields. You know, the same thing. Where you get 110 versus 130. And 50, 40, 20 uh, applies to a good amount of races. Uh, here they get 45, 25. I don't know why there's a random point zero there. I really don't. <laughs> that is just... So remote. Uh, well, yeah, if you look, the uh, the Kaldari shields are no different. 50, 40, 20, you know. Uh, they get that same handicaps everyone else where you get no EM resistance. Uh, I don't know if that's enough to make a difference, to be honest with you. In, in the case of the Drake, anyways, it's it's not comparable to the other battle cruisers. Let's put it that way. It's ahead of the playing field. Uh, it feels like it's already been buffed, and everyone else is just stuck behind, despite the fact that <laughs> they kind of nerfed it with the whole missile thing. Uh, and I, I wouldn't say I like the new missile system um, 
better either. Я все трубки поставил заряжаться. Надеюсь, их собака там с радости не собьет. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, what used to be is that missiles had like a ridiculous flight time, basically infinite. Uh, the thing is, though, if your target was flying faster than the missile velocity, because they used to be much lower velocity, uh, if you were going like a thousand meters a second, you'd outspeed a uh, missile no problem. So what happened is, if your target was faster, like for example, if you had like, um, I don't know, let's say a rifter. They're popular. Let's say you had a rifter coming straight at you, and you just fired a bunch of torps at it. It started orbiting you at one kilometer per second. Well, those torps will just keep orbiting after it. Uh, they'll never actually hit it until it slows down. And when it slows down, they'll hit it for full damage. Uh, the way the new system works is uh, it considers signature radius and target speed. So now your missiles will hit, uh, but they'll hit for laughable amounts of damage. So, it's basically the same thing as not hitting at all. You're, you're basically just wasting your missiles. But theoretically, they actually do hit. So, uh, not, really a, not really a fan. Just because it requires um, less, less, uh, less from the participants. Let's put it that way. If you're PvPing... Uh, now that little Jaguar can do whatever it wants, it actually will probably turn off its micro-warp drive to decrease its SIG radius, uh, so that when your missiles hit it, they won't do much, because its SIG radius is smaller. And that's what your missile support skills do, they actually decrease how much, uh, the SIG radius and the target speed factor into the whole equation. And I really don't get how these agents are ordered either. Like, uh, they're definitely not ordered by quality. They're not ordered by level. Uh, maybe they're ordered by division. I think that's how it goes. It goes division and then quality. So, internal security rises to the top. Uh, anyways, we just made some money. A little bit of it. Not a lot. Um, there was no bounty on those ships. And as you can see, my effective standing with this person is 4.2 after finishing two missions. Um, he, she, it now has an effective quality of 11, <laughs> which is actually quite impressive, especially considering that I have not put that many skill, that many points into my social skills. Uh, so I guess if you take anything out of this, <laughs> this one mission run and. Uh, long ass rant it's that <laughs> train your social skills and don't forget to train your auxiliary skills because they affect your damage a lot more than you will realize uh... if you guys want do an experiment go into EFT and fit yourself eight turrets and set all of your auxiliary gunnery skills to one look at that number write it down now set all of those auxiliary skills to 5. Write that number down. And just compare the difference. It's it's just worlds of damage. And they use less cap. They require less fitting. I mean, it's awesome. They're just, I mean, I understand. People these days are in a rush. I mean, there's people who just skip cruisers and just go straight from frigates into a drake and i mean that's fine the drake is great you can even run level fours in it without terribly much of a problem i mean it'll go slow because you're not doing enough damage but you'll be making loads and loads of money so who gives a damn right <laughs> uh so anyways let's request a mission from you take care of the terrorist fanatics oh god such a cunt Mm, should I show another mission? I mean, this one shouldn't... I don't know. 
missions are basically all the same. You just warp in, shoot missiles, and leave. <laughs> There's nothing to them. It's just how you make money for the other things in this game. So, uh, with that, I think I'm going to leave this part off. Uh, my attempt at an evil let's play. Well, let's see how it works out. Uh, remember, thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't. Uh, and feel free to thumbs it down if you really fucking hate it. Because <laughs> that's how I know when people don't like shit. And don't be a pussy. Go for the gold. I promise not to get offended. Plus, it's anonymous. It's the internet. You can be as much of a dickhead as you want to be. That's half the beauty of it. <laughs> I am encouraging a new generation of trolls. I feel like an asshole now. Uh, anyways, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I know. I already said it. Comic Cat, signing off. Yeah.